So welcome back, Level 1 Earth Space Scientists and Physicists. Uh, continuing on with the astronomy subtopic and the internals that we're working on. And today, looking at solar eclipses and transits. So the first thing to ask is, well, what exactly is a solar eclipse or transit? Well, a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the sun and the earth. Whereas a transit occurs when a smaller body, uh, be it a comet, for example, or an asteroid, passes in front of the sun. So how do these transits and eclipses occur? Well, a solar eclipse occurs when the sun and the earth are aligned in a straight line. And we call this a syzygy. Okay, whereas a transit occurs when the sun, the earth, and some other body uh, is in a straight line. And that's also called a syzygy. And it depends on the relative size of the object and the distance of the bodies involved. So there's basically three types of solar eclipses. Okay, um, there is the total solar eclipse. And as the name says, it's um, when the moon completely covers the, the sun um, and its totality. You've got a partial eclipse when it covers some of the sun, and you have an annular, annular eclipse, which is when the new moon basically only occurs in the new moon stage, and it's when the new moon covers the sun, and it only actually looks like a solar eclipse from certain parts of the Earth. And there's two types of solar transits, inferior and superior. So an inferior Transit occurs when the object is uh, orbiting um, in a distance which is closer to the sun than the Earth. So, for example, uh, a, a solar transit of Venus, uh, because Venus orbits closer to the sun, or a superior, where the orbit of that object is actually usually further away from the sun than the Earth. So, for example, Jupiter. Uh, a transit of Jupiter would be an example of a superior uh, transit. So when do these occur? Well, again, these uh, solar eclipses, due to the need to be in syzygy, uh, occur at specific times of the year, due to that need of that orbital overlap, that straight line overlap. Um, and solar eclipses only occur in new moon phases where the moon, uh, when the moon is between the sun and the earth. And the, the solar transits can only occur during inferior conjunctions and that's, as I just previously said in the last slide, when a planet is between the sun and the earth or during superior conjunctions when a planet is behind the sun. So solar eclipses and transits do not happen every month or every year because um, the bodies of these orbits, celestial objects, are always elliptical, not uh, completely circular and always slightly tilted. So when can you see them from Earth? Uh, well, it depends on the location of where you are. So solar eclipses usually can be seen in a very limited area of Earth, like an annular eclipse, um, when the moon shadow falls on that particular part of the Earth. And the area where this annular or total eclipse occurs is called the path of totality, in the case of a total eclipse, or annularity, in the case of an annular eclipse. And solar transits, on the other hand, can be seen in large areas of the Earth, especially when the planet or asteroid appears uh, basically as a small sun, uh, sorry, a small dot on the sun's disk due to the relative sizes. Um, and why are they rare and special? It's because they require the syzygy, the basic alignment of the sun, the Earth, and that particular other celestial body, be it another planet or a, a comet or asteroid. And because they give us an opportunity to observe the sun and its effect on the Earth, so that's why there's lots of uh, discussion or excitement amongst scientists when they occur. And they also attract lots of public attention because they're very spectacular when you look at them and can be enjoyed by anybody on Earth given the proper eye protection.